Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will discuss the diagnostic imaging for maxillary fractures. <clears throat> uh, diagnostic imaging for maxillary fractures most commonly used is occipital mental view. Uh, that is taken at 10 degree, 30 degree, and uh, also at 37 degree, which is known as water's view. Uh, lateral view of the face of the skull uh, that is known as a lateral projection that is also used for the diagnosis of the maxillary fracture. Uh, occlusal view of the maxilla, periapical views of the involved or damaged teeth. And apart from this uh, conventional radiography, CT scan uh, and CVCT, uh, both uh, can be used for the uh, diagnosis of the axillary fractures. Here you can see uh, the diagrammatic representation of occipital mental view at 30 degree. Uh, in this diagram, you can see uh, this is the uh, dendrographic um, film. And uh, this uh, dotted line show the Im imaginary horizontal line. Uh, this this uh, solid line that is extending from the external auditory meatus to the lateral canthus of the eye or outer canthus of the eye, this is known as radiographic baseline. Uh, radiographic baseline that is uh, uh, basically positioning the patient head for different projection. Uh, it will uh, facilitate the uh, patient head uh, position in different radiographic projections. And the, this represent uh, the base of the skull. Uh, as I told you that it extends from the outer canthus or lateral canthus of the eye to the external auditory uh, uh so this will change accordingly and here you can see that it make a 45 degree angle with the, the uh, radiographic film uh, but when you will prescribe the radiograph uh, the uh, you this angle that is 30 degree that is the uh, radiographic uh, 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 beam sorry the x-ray beam uh, with that make an angle with the imaginary horizontal line that is the 30 degree. So you will prescribe this angle. Uh, this 45 angle which is uh, made by the radiographic baseline with the film that is important for the radiographer because it will uh, position and reposition the head and adjust it uh, accordingly for each uh, radiograph or for different imaging, uh, conventional imaging. Uh, so um, always concentrate uh, as a radiologist or as a doctor or as a dentist, you will concentrate on this 30 degree. This 45 degree angle is significant for the uh, radiographer. So uh, this, uh, uh, you can see this is the position of a a nose and chin position. Uh, and the X-ray beam is aimed downward. This is aimed downward at 30 degree with the imaginary horizontal line. And the radiographic baseline is at 45 degree to the image receptor. Now you, here you see another diagram. This is a radiographic film. And this is the uh, radiographic baseline uh, and this makes a 45 degree angle. This is a imaginary horizontal line and now radiographic film will make the 37 degree. That is our water view. It can be a 30 degree, it can be a, now you will change the this uh, position of the uh, film if you will move downward direction this angle will change and it can be 15 degree 10 degree and if you will go upward it will increase the uh, angle but you should not go upward 
because this 37 degree is uh, the most optimum uh, angle for the in interpretation of the structures of the mid face or you can say occipital mental view. Uh, here you can see the resultant radiograph. You see the different uh, um, uh, structures seen on this radiograph. You can stop this video and see these different structures. Here is another magnification and you can see the different uh, structures in the mid face area. Uh, the, the, here is another diagram. You can again pause and see and try to identify each, each structure. Now, uh, it is very difficult uh, to see the uh, uh, fracture in this area. You can see these are the resultant radiographs. Suppose there is, is a fracture in this area, but you will not be able to interpret if you will look haphazardly in these areas. In this area, if there is any fracture, if you see, look haphazardly, you will not be able to interpret it properly. So, uh, uh, McGregor and Campbell's lines, these are the best that you can uh, interpret the, the, the radiograph and you will be able to find the uh, fracture of the uh, mid face and especially the uh, we are discussing the maxillary fracture. So uh, this diagram, uh, you can see uh, uh, Campbell's line. Uh, that is one Campbell line. That is the second one. This is the third one. This is the fourth one. This fifth one, this Campbell line, that is uh, explained by the trap nail later on. So is one through four, these Campbell lines, these belongs to the Mac Craig or Campbell. So these are originally Campbell's line and this is the Trapnell or uh, uh, line that is later on described by the Trapnell. So uh, uh, we will discuss now uh, each line. And now the first line you can see here that is uh, passes from the right zygomatic cofrontal suture and then the right supraorbital ridge and then frontal sinus, if you can see, then left supraorbital ridge and left zygomatico frontal suture. Uh, second line, here you can follow it, right zygomatic arch, right body of the zygoma, here you can see right body of the zygoma, right infraorbital margin, nasal complex, left, left orbital, left infraorbital margin, uh, and uh, left body of the zygoma and left zygomatic arch. Now come to the third one. Uh, third line indicates that it passes through the right condylar neck, right coronoid process, lateral wall of the antrum, and base of the nasal complex, lateral uh, wall of left antrum, left coronoid process, and left condylar uh, neck. And now come to the fourth. The fourth passes the right angle of the mandible. Here you can see right angle of the mandible and the line of the occlusal plane and the left angle of the mandible. And as we uh, uh, told you uh, previously that this fifth line is a trapnel line indicating that it is present on the lower border or inferior border of the mandible. And here you can see any fracture or abnormality, you can interpret it by the trapnel line. Now, the Campbell lines are interpreted on uh, this uh, radiograph. Here you can see uh, uh, this line. So this is the line one, this is line two, this is line three. So any abnormality, you will follow this one. If there is a fracture in this area, in this area, any abnormality, step deformity or fracture line, you will be able to interpret it. Now, this is the second one and this is the third one. Now, uh, come to the another way to interpret the um, fracture. 
uh, is the secondary curves. Here you can see this is the curve one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Now, uh, uh, here we will uh, discuss one by one. Now, the one uh, secondary curve is uh, that it passes along the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus. And then the inferior surface of the buttress or the body of the zygoma. Here you can see this is a zygomatic bone. So it is passes through the uh, inferior surface of the body of the zygoma. And then the inferior surface of the zygomatic arch. So this is a curve number one. Now curve number two, it passes over the superior margin of the zygomatic arch. This line one was the inferior surface of the zygomatic arch. Now secondary curve two passes over the superior surface of the zygomatic arch. And then the lateral aspect of the body of the zygoma or zygomatic bone, this is a zygomatic bone. So this is part, passes through the lateral aspect of the body of the zygoma and the lateral orbital margin. Now here you can see a third curve that is passes along the inner aspect of the orbital margin. And number four, that is the outer curvature of the nasal complex. So if uh, you see any abnormality along, or a fracture along this uh, line one, or a second, sorry, uh, uh, curve one, curve two, or curve three, or curve four, you will be able to find it. So you will examine the uh, occipital mental view uh, by looking at la curve one, two, three, and four to interpret the maxillary fractures. Now, uh, here it see that uh, uh, by interpreting the uh, secondary curves, uh, you will be able to see the elephant's trunk, how it elephant trunks is formed. This is a made up of a uh, zygomatic line that is passes as we discuss it passes over the superior or uh, superior margin of the zygomatic arch and then the body of the zygoma. Second is the media medially that is the maxillary line passes along the inferior margin of the zygomatic arch, inferior body of the zygoma and the lateral aspect of the um, maxillary sinus. Here you can see elephant trunk. It formed by the superior margin of the zygomatic arch and the lateral aspect of the body of the zygoma. And uh, th th this is a zygomatic line. And another one is the maxillary line that is over the inferior margin of the arch of the uh, inferior margin of the body or the buttress of the zygoma and along the lateral aspect of the maxillary sinus. So this is a elephant trunk. Now we will practically apply uh, these uh, uh, Campbell's lines on this radiograph. Here you can see this uh, occipital mental view and uh, uh, this line shows the right zygomatocofrontal suture, uh, right supraorbital ridge, then uh, frontal sinus, left uh, supraorbital ridge and left zygomatocofrontal suture. Uh, so if you see here, you will find uh, nothing abnormality uh, in this area. Now we'll go towards the line two, that is right zygomatic arch and then right body of the uh, zygoma, uh, right infraorbital uh, margin. Here you can see you will suspect something uh, abnormality here. So this is discontinuity or uh, uh, step deformity. Uh, a second thing is that this line passes through the nasal complex and then towards the opposite side of the left infraorbital margin. But you will also see around this line. So if, if you go as it passes through this area, nasal complex, but here you can see that there is a something abnormality or discontinuity. So here you will find another one.
Now go to the opposite side, uh, infraorbital margin of the opposite side. Here you can see uh, some uh, problem or discontinuity or step deformity. So uh, this is another uh, uh, fracture area. So this is a basically a LIFO2 uh, area, um, uh, LIFO2 fracture. Similarly, you, you will go for the third line and for the fourth line, and you here you will also apply this um, curve, uh, secondary curve, and this is the curve one uh, along the infraorbital margin of the zygomatic uh, arch, and then the um, inferior uh, border of the um, zygoma or uh, zygomatic bone, uh, body of the zygomatic bone, and then the lateral aspect of the maxillary sinus. Similarly, this is curve two around the superior margin of the zygoma, and then go around the uh, lateral uh, margin of the zygoma and the lateral part of the orbital margin. Uh, so uh, similarly, this uh, inner aspect of the orbital margin here, you will see this detect this abnormality by curve three, this is the curve three. And here you can see outer curvature. And again, you will outer curvature, then you will you will uh, interpret this one, you will find this abnormality. So this fracture and this fracture can also be found by interpreted by the curve three and curve four. So these uh, Campbell's line and secondary curve, um, these will help you in the interpretation of uh, this occipital mental view or in the diagnosis of mid face fracture as well as the maxillary fracture. Uh, this is the lateral projection um, of the face of the skull to interpret the maxillary fracture. Here you can see that this is a leaf or tree fracture. Uh, here it, this shows the separation, uh, uh, craniofacial separation. As you know that the fracture, d uh, 43 fracture is the craniofacial separation. Uh, uh, apart from the conventional radiography, you can uh, uh, advise uh, the conventional, uh, uh, sorry, the CT, conventional CT or CBCT or 3D CT. Uh, for the uh, uh, further diagnosis if if the facility is available thank you